Greetings, folks. It's Professor Fiore. Thanks for joining in on our little Python adventure. In this sequence of videos, we're going to be looking at introductory Python programming with an emphasis towards electrical and electronics applications. So what I've done here is I've opened up the Python shell, the idle, the integrated development environment. And it's sort of an unassuming little window here. Um, Usually this is just used as our output window, but we can use it as sort of a scratch pad kind of a thing. We can use it as sort of a programmable calculator, if you will. So we're going to start here just looking at a few things, and then we'll go over and actually write a proper program. So at, at the prompt here, at the cursor, we can type in things like you would with your calculator. Like I can say uh, 13 plus 6, and you can see it gives me the answer, 19. Right. Now, when it comes to math, we have the usual math operations, you know, add, subtract, multiply, divide. We can raise things to powers, in other words, exponents, but we can do a lot more than that. We do, however, have to follow the math hierarchy. We can't build fractions, you know, built up sort of fractions. So we have to do them on one line. If I wanted to, um, let's say, add 2 to 3 and then divide the result by 4, this isn't going to do what we want. Why? Because multiplies and divides have a higher precedence than adds and subtracts. But the precedence order basically goes parentheses, uh, powers, you know, exponents, then we do multiplies and divides, and lastly we do adds and subtracts. So in fact, this is not going to add 2 and 3 and then divide the result by 4, in other words, 5 fourths. What we are, in fact, going to do is divide 3 by 4 and get 3 quarters, and then add 2 to it, right? 2.75. If I really wanted to do the former, we would have to sort of force the operation right, with a parenthesis. All right, so I got 5 fourths, 1 and a quarter. All right, uh, multiply, we use an asterisk. And if I want to do a power, do a double asterisk. So 2 raised to the 4th power, 16. Beautiful, right? Okay. So far, so good. If I want to do anything more uh, involved, like I want to use, uh, I don't know, like a sine function, arctan, something like that, uh, there is a math module we would have to import. So I can say import math. And then I can use something like that. I can say... Um, math, that's the module name, and then the function within it, sine. Notice it gives me a nice little pop-up of things I can do. So I can take the sine of um, zero, this is in radians, and I get zero, all right? It also includes some convenient constants like pi. So far so good, right? All right. That by itself is somewhat useful, but you know, you probably already have a scientific calculator. So um, we can include variables. Now in your math class, you usually have variables like X, Y, Z, and so forth, but we have a much broader palette. A variable name in Python can be very descriptive. It's not just single letters. So we could have a variable name like voltage or power or something like that. The rule is a variable name has to start with a letter, then it's any combinations of letters, numeral, and underscore, as long as it's not a reserved word. In other words, it's not a, not a word that is elsewhere used to invoke a command in the language. So I can have something like A. I can say you know, A gets the value 2, and that's stored in the computer. So there's a memory location that's tagged as A, and the number 2 is thrown in there. And I can say, you know, B is 5. And I can say C, oops, C gets the value of A plus B. Now when you do this, this is an assignment. Right? Actually, these are all assignments, but this is a little equate. The thing that you're assigning to has to be all by itself on the left-hand side of the equal sign. And I suggest that you get in the habit of calling the equal sign by the name gets. Don't call it equals, because uh, we have something a little bit different when we do it 
check, in other words, to see if x is the same as y. So pronounce that as gets. It's not really an equals sign as, as you would think of it in terms of math class. This won't do algebra for you. So you can't say, you know, let's say um, x plus 5 gets a. Right? You're going to get an error on this. Cannot assign to operator, right? You can say the something similar. You could say x is a minus five, but it won't do the algebra for you. Okay, so right now there's three things in memory. There's a, b, and c, and if I want to get them out, if I want to display them, we can use the print command. Oops. So the thing you want to print, right? Giving you a clue right here. Thing you want to print just comes next. So if I want to print A, I just do this. All right? There's the two that we had assigned up there. Um, I could say print, you know, A and B. Just use a comma. And there's our two values, two and five. I can include a string in here. So I'll put this in quotes. You know, the answer is. comma c right there it is the answer is seven right the two plus five is seven all right okay now we're starting to get somewhere when it comes to these uh, strings right these string literals as we call them uh, they can be pretty uh, complicated and they can also be assigned to variables so I can have um, like h I can say gets the value say I gets the value aardvarks. Okay. And now I can do something like this. Granted, this is a little contrived, but bear with me. Right. I like So what do you think this is going to do, right? I like H and I, so it's going to look up the value of H, which is doggies. It's going to look up the value of I, which is aardvarks. I like doggies and aardvarks. Okay. Now, notice it even added a little uh, space in there, right? Just like I did right here. Okay. These can be mixed, like we did up here. If you have something really complicated, with a, with a uh, formatting of a string, you can do what's called a triple quoted string. And by the way, strings can also be uh, created using single quotes rather than double quotes. That way you can have um, like a double quoted thing inside your string, if you follow what I'm saying. Um, if I want something really complicated, let's just, for argument's sake, I'll just call it M. I'm going to put down three quotes. I'm just going to put something stupid down here. This is something stupid. I'm just going to do some spacing. And some more. And I'll skip a line, right? And some more. Now triple quote that out. So if I print that, right? So this thing exactly as I've created it has been assigned to M. So if I said print M, see, it includes all this goofy spacing stuff that I did. Okay, everything that I did is there. Notice there's the leading space on the T, right? Capital TH. You know, Python is not going to do any sort of um, spell check for you or anything like that. It's not going to flag this. Whatever you type in there, that's what's coming out. Okay, so there's skip line, extra space, indents, exactly as you put it. So if you have something formatted like you want to have some uh, directions or something like that, um, a triple quote is a good way to do it. Now, we obviously have mathematical functions. Right? We can deal with uh, you know, numbers, integers, and floats. 
but there are certain things we can do with strings themselves. So let's just take a couple of uh, strings. Let's just say, I'll take one called I, and we'll say that's Bob. And uh, let's take J, and we'll call that Mo. Now, if you printed that out, I'm just going to say I comma J here. All right, we got Bob and Mo. But check this out. I plus J. What do you think that's going to do? Well, that does something called concatenation. Right, it literally jams those two things together into like one word, Bob Mo. And you can also uh, use that in sort of a formula kind of form. I can say K gets I plus J. And then I can print K. Look, there's Bob Mo. You can also replicate a string. So you can say something like... Um, three times K. And I got three Bob Mo's, Bob Mo, Bob Mo, Bob Mo. Okay. Now, obviously you can't subtract, you can't divide. I mean, what's Bob divided by Mo? That doesn't really make much sense. Um, you know, and Bob minus Mo doesn't give you Larry. So, but you can do this concatenation, the add, and you can do the multiply, right? Which is the replication of it. So there's some basic ideas in terms of you know, printing things and doing some math, right? All well and good. Problem that we have is there's no way to store this. There's no way to recall this. So I'm kind of limited with what I can do. It's a nice scratch pad. You know, if I'm working on something, I'm not sure the syntax of, um, you know, a particular command, I can always come in here and just check it. But... You know, if I want to uh, use something over and over and over again, this is not really going to quite cut it for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to open a new file. Okay, I'm going to create a new file over here. And you see a new window open, opens up. And this, move this up here. This is an editor window for an actual program, right? This is really our output window. You might recall that it had that, um, that little title at the top, okay, um, just to remind you, right, it had this, and it has these prompts going all the way down, right, those greater than signs, whereas this new thing that we've created, it's just a blank slate, right, so this is our editor window, so we can create something in here, and by the way, um, you can come in here and, and uh, do some configuration things, I've actually increased the size of the font so that you can see it a little better on the video. I've increased this to a 14-point font, but you know, by default, it's quite a bit smaller. Um, you can come in and you know, change different kinds of things, like uh, colors, you know, highlights of various things. Because you can see that this is all uh, color coded, right? So you've got you've got some options here on what what you want to do. But in any case, one, one thing I'm going to add, one thing I have added, is line numbers on here. So I, it makes it easier for me to refer to things. By default, that's not there, but you might want to add it. In any case, so I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a program, right, using what we've already learned over here. And I'll save this so that I can recall it later. So probably the first and most important thing we should talk about in a program is this, right? This is a comment tag. It's not a hashtag. It's a comment tag. It's a pound sign. And basically what it is is a command that tells Python to essentially ignore the line because it's for human consumption. In other words, it's a comment to another human, another programmer, or to yourself, you know, weeks down the road. So I'm just going to call this, you know, my first program. So usually you would have a description of the program and things like that up here. Okay. Notice how the numbers are increasing. So the, all I'm going to really do here is just a very simple printout. I'm going to use our print command, just like we used over here. Print out a message. Classic first message, hello world. Now there are some things we can do um, inside our quote string. We can add a backslash n, which is a new line character. 
We can also add a backslash T, which is a tab, so we can use those down the road to do some spacing. So here's my program. That's all it's going to do. So what it should do ultimately is, when I come over here, when I run it down here, I should just see this message, hello world. So I'm going to run this. Now, normally I would save this, but it's going to prompt me anyway. And do I want to save it? Yes, I do. Where do I want to save it? Oh, I think I'll save it on my desktop. And I'll just call it my first program. Okay. It must end in a .py extension, which it will do for you. And there it is. There's my hello world right there. So I can come in here and change this. Do a little copy paste, right? How are you doing? Now I had mentioned the uh, tab, right? Just to show you. Slash T. All right, let's run that. All right, hello world. There's the line skip right there. My, my uh, slash T brings this in a tab space. How are you doing? Okay. We can also do some simple math in here. I'll change my program a little bit. So let's say I do something like uh, A gets 10. B gets uh, 23.5. C gets A divided by B. print A, B, C, just for fun. Okay, let's run that. Oops. Okay, so there's the first line, there's the second line, there's my values, 10, 23 and a half, and then presumably 10 divided by 23 and a half. All right. Okay, when we do math on this, that might be excessive. We got a lot of digits. You might want to round that off. So there is a function called round that you can use. I'll remind you, just like we did um, back here, there is a math module. If you want to do anything fancy, import the math module. Not that we're doing anything fancy here, but um, just as a reminder. So I can say round C. Okay, notice there's the number, gives you a template, and then the number of digits, round to a given precision. So if I want to have, you know, like five digits or something, I could do this. Oops. Oh, yeah, my bad. So that I got an error there. As a matter of fact, let me do that again, just to show you, because that I went rather quickly. Unexpected EOF while parsing, that means end of file. So you might do, a, you know, something a little wrong here. What's the problem? I have an unbalanced set of parentheses. So I've got my parentheses for the round function, but I need a close parenthesis for print. So it's basically expecting to find this guy. It didn't find it. And then it said, hey, I got the end of the file. I hit the last line. Ugh. Okay, so there you go. Notice how we've reduced this down to five digits from the original, which was so big. All right. Okay, so, you know, other kinds of errors. What happens if I leave that quote off? You could forget. Ooh, EOL, what's that? End of line while scanning string literal. So it's coming out here, and it's saying, I expect to see a, a close quote on here, and there isn't one. All right, that's not good. So you got to go back and look. And notice the color coding on here, right? Notice how the the um, the string is green. String literal is green, but this parenthesis is also that same green, which means it, it meaning Python, thinks that's part of the string. See, now it's black, right? Now that guy's black. Okay, so that's a, a typical thing. Python is also do another error. Case sensitive, capital P for print. Notice this is black. It's not this sort of 
purpley color, which is what the uh, internal functions are going to be color coded as. So that kind of gives you a clue, but you know, you might not notice that. So, okay, let's try to run it. Oh, look, I got an error over here and it says name print is not defined. I don't know what that is. So you come back here and you look and it says line five and module, right? There's the, there's the offending line and it's telling you print is not defined. So you have to come up here and say, okay, there's my line five. This is not defined. Oh yeah. That's supposed to be, um, you know, lowercase p, right? So when you first start programming here, you first start putting things in, you're going to, you're going to make errors. It's just that simple. Some things aren't too persnickety, you know, like this space. You could have that space or not have that space. It doesn't really make any difference. Um, but if you over here said, you know, C divided by A equals B or gets B, that's, you know, not proper. Assignments are always to the single element on the left-hand side of the equal sign. Okay, cannot assign to operator. It's a similar area to what we had back here when we tried it. Um, okay. You're not going to break anything, right? So when you first start, sure, play around with this. Individual spaces vertically, they're not going to make any difference. As a matter of fact, you probably want to add some just for sort of a visual break, just like we take a book and we divide it up into paragraphs, you know, for a visual, a visual sort of break. You can do the same thing with your code. Just don't cram everything together. You know, it looks like. Bleh. So you try to make it look halfway decent. Try to make it look readable. That's very important. Okay. All right. So this is a nice little rundown. My suggestion is you just take some things like this, these little print statements, some math sorts of things. Uh, just try them. Uh, see what you get out of them. Uh, you know, sort of monkey around with them. And... Um, Try to try to predict what will happen. In other words, if you came in here and altered a statement in your mind, try to figure out what the result should be, what you think, what you expect it to be, and then run it and see if it actually does that. Right? The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to get a syntax error like this, or you know, it's not going to operate the way you think it operates. Uh, you know, some odd thing might happen, but you can't really break anything. So you know, that's great right? Okay. So what we'll do next time is um, we'll, we'll pick up on this and we'll figure out how to get values into the program interactively. In other words, instead of just assigning things like we did here, you know, internally, um, you know, we'll ask the user, the person running the program for values. You know, how old are you? What's the value of the voltage supply? Um, you know, what's the value of the resistor? Things like that. And then we can start making these interactive programs that'll you know, do useful things for us. Okay, see you then.